This case is about what taxes on certain transactions made by Mrs. Staveley in relation to her pension funds. Whilst together, Mrs. Staveley and her husband set up a company and Mrs. Staveley had a large pension fund with its occupational pension scheme. When they divorced, her pension fund was transferred to a separate pension policy for her. But Mrs. Staveley was very concerned that on her death, funds could revert for the benefit of her ex-husband. This concern led to the events which underlie this litigation. Under the pension policy, if Mrs. Staveley died without taking lifetime benefits, a lump sum would be paid to her estate by way of a death benefit. Mrs. Staveley never did draw any lifetime benefits. She made a will leaving her property to her sons, so the death benefit would have benefited them in that way. But in fact, Mrs. Staveley then moved the funds from that policy in the following circumstances. She had developed cancer from which she ultimately died in December 2006. Knowing she was dying, she transferred the funds from the pension policy into a personal pension plan, a PPP, shortly before her death. Her sole motive in making this transfer was to make sure that her ex-husband would not benefit from her pension funds. Mrs. Staveley did not draw lifetime benefits under the PPP, and in due course, the death benefit therefore arose was paid by the scheme administrator to her sons in accordance with her expressed wishes. HMRC determined that inheritance tax was payable on first, the transfer of the pension funds from Mrs. Staveley's first pension policy into the PPP, and secondly, her omission to take lifetime benefits under the PPP. This was challenged on behalf of Mrs. Staveley's estate. This court decides by a majority that there is no charge to inheritance tax on the transfer to the PPP. It decides unanimously that tax is, however, chargeable in respect of the omission to draw lifetime benefits. Inheritance tax is chargeable on the value transferred by a disposition, which is a transfer of value. However, Section 10 of the Inheritance Tax Act 1984 contains provisions which serve to prevent certain dispositions from amounting to a transfer of value, so excluding them from tax. It applies where it's shown that the disposition, in the words of the statute, was not intended and was not made in a transaction intended to confer gratuitous benefit on any person. Looked at on its own, the transfer of funds into the PPP comes within section 10. This court is unanimous about that. It was not intended to confer any gratuitous benefit on anyone. On the contrary, Mrs. Staveley made it with the sole intention of ensuring that no funds made their way back to her husband. But was the transfer into the PPP made in a transaction intended to confer gratuitous benefit? HMRC argued that the transfer had to be taken together with Mrs. Staveley's omission to draw lifetime benefits under the PPP. The omission was intended to benefit the sons. So on HMRC's argument, when the two were viewed together, the transfer was also clothed with an intent to confer gratuitous benefit. The majority of this court does not accept that argument. In essence, this is because the transfer and the omission cannot properly be taken together for the purposes of Section 10. For this to be done, they would have to constitute a series of transactions and any associated operations. They didn't because there was no common intention linking them together as a scheme to confer gratuitous benefit. However, Section 3 of the Inheritance Tax Act applies so that the omission to draw lifetime benefits under the PPP gives rise to inheritance tax. It falls within the terms of that provision because Mrs. Staveley's estate was diminished by it and it yielded the death benefits, which then increased her son's estates. The connection between those two events was not broken by the fact that the payment to the sons came through the 
pension scheme administrator in the exercise of its discretion under the scheme. 